Welcome to the Washdown Podcast, episode number 67. And tonight's guest is Jana Rumney. And Jana has been in law enforcement for a little over four years. So we get to sit down and talk to her about how much the job has changed um, in that short amount of time and the things that she has gone through. We have a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. So here we go. Episode number 67 of the Washdown Podcast with special guest Jana Rumney. Mm-hmm. Um, shine down simple, man. Just insane. Probably the greatest cover ever. I can't think of one off the top of my head that's better. I... <sighs> I don't know. Have you heard? Bad Wolves Zombie. I was about to say. Cranberries I mean, are good, but yeah. the Bad Wolves version is really good. <laughs> it, it is really good, but I don't know. Just for my money, that Shine Down cover I, is. I don't, yeah, I don't disagree. It's just, like, it's powerful. Like, yeah. Well, that was because his voice was just ridiculous back then. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, damn. And the Foo Fighters drummer died. Mm. I did. Did you read his talk screen? Mm. Uh huh. <laughs> it, they should have just listed what wasn't <laughs> in his bloodstream. I was like, oh, so you died peacefully. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you Natural been to a Foo causes. Fighters concert? Uh, I have not. That is one band that I have not seen. I've been twice. It was amazing. Did Both you go times. to the one where the like eight year old played Metallica on stage? So they do that at almost like every concert, but yes, at Sprint Center, yeah. when it was still Sprint Center, yes, it was amazing. I <laughs> he played the show. It was a uh, Inner Sandman, so he started playing. Yes, yeah. I think it was a ten-year-old. Uh, well, yes. I saw I saw the one where uh, they had the little girl come up and play the drums with them for one of their songs. Mm-hmm. That was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. But yeah. <laughs> we need to start a music. Sad. We need to start a music podcast now. We can do it with Janice. She's like, she's yeah. well versed. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> she's actually schooled in music. Yeah, but not so. the music that anybody likes to listen to, unless you like to listen to opera. Mm, you're mm. out. I already saw you shake your head. You're out. <laughs> yeah, prob- I still listen probably. To classical. classical is not the same as opera. Fair. I'm, I have a I have a weird range. It's either classical, mm-hmm. '90s country, mm-hmm. or emo. I okay. still have yet to graduate from that phase. You know, Avril Lavigne just came out with a new CD. Yeah. And I was, uh, oh, God. It's like literally the same like, as all her other stuff. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but yeah, like. She hasn't changed one single bit, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. I, well, it felt a little more mainstream than her old albums. Just a little. I wouldn't know. It It felt like. Not as bad as Panic at the Disco went, but not far from it. Like old Panic versus new Panic, night and day. They sold out when they did a Disney cover. <laughs> hey, just, don't knock Disney. No, I'm not. I could still get down to Disney. I literally just watched the Corella movie last night at the station. Hmm? It's awesome. It's fucking awesome. Oh, the live action one? Yeah, how she yeah. did not, like, legit how she did not get at least a nomination for Best Actors in that. Speaking of, did you hear about the Oscars yesterday? Did I see it? Yes, I did. <laughs> and have I saved approximately 77 memes today? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I, I saw that they were talking about that, and I was like, no, they must have been playing somehow. And then it was like, no, he was not playing. No, everyone was like, he was joking. I'm like, did you hear the sound of that? Yeah. Like, I, I had to re- well, watch it like 20 times because I thought he punched him by the sound. Well, there's tricks as far Unless as... Unless he did like one, like just one of these. He slapped or, him. I know, but that sounded like... That was a thud. Yeah. That wouldn't have... Sl- so, if you... I know that you're redneck enough and country enough that you've watched them wrestling. So, you know, whenever they slap each other, like the sound that you really hear is them hitting themselves. Because you'll notice they'll swing... And there's always a delay in the sound, yeah. Yeah, but it's they smack their own chest whenever they're hitting the other guy, and that's where the sound comes from. So I I thought initially that that's what it was until I watched all the stuff that got cut out here in America. 
that they didn't cut out in Australia <laughs> whenever he <laughs> told Chris Rock, keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth yeah. <laughs> twice. Yeah, that was a... Uh, that was not a joke. I just thought of a new name for our podcast of us three. What is it with you and rebranding? Two rednecks and a redhead. <laughs> Two rednecks and a redhead. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. I mean, you are factually accurate. <laughs> so, Jana, rethinking life choices about coming on the podcast? <laughs> you know, no. <laughs> like she had anything better to do. <laughs> That's true. Wait on yeah. a Jeep that ain't coming in. Well, that's, that is, that <laughs> At least it's true. not a Bronco. Hey, ain't no shit. You get that about quarter past never. I was talking to the captain today after our e board. He was like, yeah, I need to get hold of you. I think Bronco's coming in soon. I said, you've been saying that for a year, bro. Yeah. Holler, holler at me when it's actually here. <laughs> Tell me about the pain. Show me the baby. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thanks for, thanks for coming on the show. Of course. So why don't we start off with a little bit of your background and then we'll kind of go from there. So I know we've alluded to the whole music thing, but how did you go from music to law enforcement? So, um, like I said, I started as a music major and obviously I got like two, two and a half years through it, made a lot of friends doing that. I had a friend whose husband was on the campus police department about this time. I decided that I wanted to move off campus um, I needed a job to obviously pay for uh, my home. So he got me a job as a dispatcher. Um, so, and I love doing that. I got such a rush from that, even just being behind the phone and on the, on the mic, it was much more fun than being in music. And so I kind of did some soul searching, decided that music was no longer the route that I wanted to go. And I thought that I wanted to do some form of law enforcement, whether that was still dispatching or being a police officer. So I switched my major to communications entirely and then um, started looking at police academies. Um, did a bunch of ride alongs with the Ohio Patrol. Um, Thank God you're not a trooper. I know. Their hats are so cool though. <laughs> <laughs> and shiny boots and yeah, and they get their own cars. Yeah. But yeah ultimately i ended up coming to the big city to uh work here you know i got a state trooper friend i think we need to have him on so i can just hammer him for an hour <laughs> somehow i do not think that's going to go well for you no he'd probably write me a fucking ticket just sitting here <laughs> he'll find something yeah hats Guaranteed. crooked three dollar fine <laughs> fuck yeah. you dude <laughs> state statute 2754 <laughs> says i must issue you ticket <laughs> We say that jokingly if there are any state troopers watching I, this I show. don't. I don't. Fuck you guys. I love you. But you're all assholes. I will say, so just a quick sidebar on that. That's one of the most, one of the maddest times that I've ever been on the fire department involved a state trooper. We had a woman that had a wreck and she was completely out of it. Of course, you don't know why. It could have been alcohol. It could have been blood sugar. The PCP. It, yeah. We don't know why. But so we finally get her extricated from the car, carry her up a hundred foot embankment, get her into the back of the ambulance. And of course she's freaking out and we're getting her calmed down. And as soon as we had gotten her calmed down, the back doors of the ambulance just come flying open. And this fuck face with a Mount Me hat on climbs up into the back of the ambulance and goes, you're under arrest for DUI, but like has not administered a field sobriety test. Nothing. He's just, you crashed your car. You're drunk. Like you haven't been within 15 feet of her. So, I mean, you must be like the best fucking human. Dude, they are implanted. So, they're machines. But yeah. Made in Jeff city. <laughs> <laughs> that they, Put skin and uniforms on and send out the field. They're, they're the T-1000s. They yeah, they have scent detectors <laughs> that pick things up so, from nine miles away. But anyway, so she freaks out, and he handcuffs her to the cot and everything, and, you know, we're in the back of the ambulance with her as she's freaking out all the way to the hospital, and this happened well north of us, so it's a long upper ride. Tro upper trooper country. Yeah. It's a long ride down to the closest hospital that we get to go to in that situation. And 
so yeah, that was a nice 20 to 25 minute ride of trying to get her to calm down and explaining to her what was actually going to happen. That's how you got to know your trooper country. Yeah. Like up north, like just to pass the airport, it's fair game. Yeah. Where to the speed limit. Same like mm -hmm. when I cross the river, every time I come home, I cross the river, there's one sitting just on the other side of the bridge. And then I do the speed limit until I hit the split, and then it's back to 20 over. <laughs> Good thing I'm not a traffic cop. Yeah. Be careful, because they will write you, too. Yeah, I know. They don't care. Uh, mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that was my state trooper story. Probably didn't need to share that, but... But thank you for not becoming one. Yeah. You're welcome. I think I would have been paid better. Uh, I would, it would have been safer. So, I don't know about safer, no, but I, mean, I would have been paid better. They work by themselves quite a bit. And I know back home in Louisiana, the state troopers, at least whenever I ever, was growing up. Have you ever popped the trunk of a state trooper car? Can I finish my thought? They have grenade launchers and rocket launchers. <laughs> Maybe They have they many do. SAM missiles pop out of the trunk of their okay. car. They're fine. Okay. <laughs> but... Back home in Louisiana, the state troopers actually didn't make that much money. They made less than the city cops. Hmm. And they had to live wherever the state told them to live. Right. So, you know, if it's like your quadrant is northwest, then you got to go live in the northwest quadrant. And regardless of, you know, so you're, <laughs> you know how we're citywide? <laughs> They're statewide. Yeah. So. So you didn't become a state trooper? I did not. How many police departments did you apply for? two and i got i this process i was getting shoved through a little bit quicker and i got to do um a ride along with them quite a bit quicker and i fell in love with it immediately probably because of the officer that i rode with was amazing but i withdrew my application <laughs> with the highway patrol because it was going so well here so i put all my eggs in one basket which i probably shouldn't have done but it it ended up well I thought you just did a ride along. I didn't know your dumb ass actually applied there. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> I did. All right. So How long have you been here now? <laughs> um, it'll be f mm, close to five years now. Let's well, see. I thought we came on at the same, pretty much the same time. Mm -hmm. So, what else do you do? Mm, I love to play with my dogs a ton. I have four. So. Are they your only friends? Yes. Okay. Only ones. Understandable. <laughs> Dogs are better than humans, so let's get real. They don't, not a single person will argue without. Yeah, with no. That. I mean, they talk back, but they don't talk back. Yeah. So, that's lovely. No. Um, I love to hang out with my friends. I love to work out. CrossFit's my thing. Um, Mine but, too. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. I could tell. <laughs> I. Yeah, now, I've been on my soapbox about CrossFit before. I'm not going to get back on it. <laughs> it's like my favorite TikTok, like, oh, I'm so tired from CrossFit. They're pronounced croissants, and you've had four of them. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a runner, so, I mean, yeah. lifting is way more fun than mm -hmm. running. You know how you know if somebody does CrossFit? They talk about it all the time. Wait 10 seconds, they'll tell you. <laughs> 13 minutes. We made it 13 minutes in the podcast. <laughs> and, she, and she told us about CrossFit. <laughs> I think that's restraint. Yeah, that's actually not bad. We'll see how many. I'm also still pretty new to it, so. She said it twice. Let's see how many CrossFits we can get in this podcast. There should be whiskey in here, and we can just take a sip every time we hear the word that I'm not going to say. You never let me bring whiskey. I said there should be. There's not any in there. Oh. Why would I? <laughs> Have you ever watched the podcast? Our ratings would either tank or skyrocket. There's nothing in between. <laughs> and my wife would kill me. <laughs> uh, you are recently engaged? I am. Idiot. I'm just kidding. We actually like him. <laughs> He's been here twice. I know. And you just brought me on. And we like him more. I know. I can tell. <laughs> He's, um, I'm like in, in, walking out the door and he goes, hey, tell my boys I said hi. Like, so in my defense, <laughs> I didn't what? even know you existed until the last time that he came on. And he's like, hey, Ooh. I got engaged. Ooh. 
He's in trouble. So. Sorry, Scott. Jeremy just fucked you. Hey, he's not going to know it was me until. <laughs> Two weeks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> then I'll get a text message. <laughs> One of the reasons I wanted to have you on, and and I was talking with it with Jeremy about, um, you and Scott work for the same department. Mm-hmm. It is a very busy department. Yep. You both are in specialty units of this department. Mm-hmm. What we were kind of curious is, like, you know, there's the the very easy, like, cop marries a nurse, cop marries a firefighter, firefighter marries a nurse. Like, we just seem to interbreed amongst each other. Um, But kind of just take us into the mind of, like, with you guys both being a specialty unit, schedules being weird, being very busy, working for the same department. How, what is a relationship like that look like? Well, you have to be really intentional with everything that you do. So he works a day shift, which is typically like eight to five. And I work PMs, which is 2 PM to midnight. So on the days that we both work, which is most of the days, I don't see him at all. Like I, I will come home, go to bed and he'll be in bed already. And then he will wake me up with his alarms and then he's off at work and then that's it. So, um, managing your schedules is huge to like make anything work, obviously, but especially, um, that, especially since he's got kids. So, um, his days off are normally like with the kids, we have the kids. And so there's not a lot of time that we get to just be Scott and Jana. Um, so I am a super planner. He's not a super planner. So (laughs) I have everything written out on a paper calendar. Like, oh, look, this day we have off, but Riley has dance. Or this day we have off and Owen's got baseball. But, um, yeah, so being intentional and being a planner is what it makes it work currently. What's it like? Something I was kind of curious on. Do you have... Is it always, are you always talking shop? Like how, when you guys are both as in, invested in your careers, are you, is there time to be Scott and Jana or are you always cop Scott and cop Jana when you're uh, around there's, each other? There definitely has to be a balance. It's nice that I can talk to him about issues that I have or stuff that I've seen on the job or whatever. It's nice that I can go to him and talk to that, talk to him about that, but it's also nice to just completely separate that. So when we just have Scott and Jana time for the most part, it's just us being us outside of the job. So like we just started breaking bad, which is still kind of like a police thing, but not a police thing. Um, we just um, started watching that's that not a police thing. At it's, all. The, it's the opposite. <laughs> it's exactly what he goes after, but, <laughs> but it's like, we do those things like Yellowstone was our big thing yes. for a while. Yeah. Right. So still waiting for season five of that, but like, we have found ways to um, get away from the job because, I mean, if I just talk about the job all the time, I'm going to burn out really quickly. I'm going to be annoyed with him because I don't want to talk about the job all the time. But, Well, I mean, here's the silver lining and the bright side. You guys have now discovered jeeping. Yes. You're so I, fucked. <laughs> I, I still haven't been on a jeeping adventure aside from hey. the road. So, I mean, you can talk to your boy about that. Hey, I invited him, and he should have passed it along to you. I agree. And I invited him as well. He's in the doghouse. And dog I house. passed it along to you. I know. He's in the doghouse. So, we're going at the end of April, just a quick trip down to Arkansas. And then we may do something in July, but I don't know. That's up in the air. But I'm then Septem- to- September, we're going to the Rubicon. 7th through 11th, you can come to Colorado. Told him to. What month? July. Oh, July. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> That's very important, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I I, I was kind of curious, because it just seems like, especially in law enforcement right now, I hate to use the word toxic, but it does not seem like a very optimistic lifestyle and career right now. So, like, that's what I was curious of, how you guys do balance that, like, just very strenuous under the microscope negative unfortunately career but then still find time to put a smile on as a couple so it is really hard um we are both fortunate in the positions that we're in right now that we're not answering 911 calls unless we want to um like in my position i'm 
strictly going after the bad guy. Somebody who we've identified um, as being the perpetrator of a crime or somebody that uh, another specialized unit passes along to us as having a warrant or something. Like, that's all that I do. So I don't have to necessarily... I'm not stopping cars every day. I'm not answering 911 calls about the homeless guy that's passed out on the corner. Like, I'm not having to deal with the public a lot anymore. And he also doesn't have to deal with that. At the beginning of our relationship, it was hard because we were doing the protest deal. We, as an I, was doing the protest deal, and he was he was in a parking lot because you can't you can't bring your canine to a protest. But so that was hard. Seems less than ideal. Right, right. That was hard for me, and we talked about it a lot because it was hard for me because all these things were getting hurled at me, literally and figuratively. Things were being hurled at me: insults, bottles, rocks, fireworks. How many times did you get beans. called a white devil? That's what I'm curious. About. I didn't get called that ever. There uh, were lots of other things that I just won't mention right now, but white devil was not one of them. But so it was interesting for us during that time because while he I had have a black guides, friend, I swear. <laughs> His name is James. Look at him here. <laughs> get out of here. I need your help. Shit. <laughs> Weren't you guys having like rocks thrown at you? Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah, they hit say, us too. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I thought we had to like escort you at one point. Yeah. But. <laughs> yeah, they smashed in the window of one of the chief's buggies. And the guy had a knee blown out with a brick. And... Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just fuck us, right? <laughs> you, the people that were doing that kind of stuff, though, they were not down there for social justice or reform. They right. were rioters. Right. And. I mean, you look at any major city during that time where you had extensive extended riots, the people that were arrested and all of that stuff, they were never from those cities. Yeah. It was, I mean, I think somebody coined the term uh, tour, rioting tourism, which was basically what it was. They would have pallets of bricks and all kinds of crap dropped off from who knows where and they just shuttle from city to city. Hey, we'll riot here till you get arrested, and then we'll just move on to the next one. Did Scott ever tell you about the time he came to visit me at the station a while back? Mm -mm. So it was before him and we went to on our trip the first time, and a couple weeks before, and he was coming to hang out. He like just got the jeep. We were just bullshitting about it, and <laughs> we kept getting staged for PD calls, and one of them was like <laughs> the first one was right across the street at the bus stop. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. And it was like stage for PD on a no no. And he's like, is it, you got a call? And I was like, no, nah, we got to wait for PD. I was like, wait, drive your ass over there and see what the fuck's going on. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, really? I said, yeah, I'm not fucking waiting for whoever. Just go over there. <laughs> and it was probably nothing. It, it goes over there, it goes back. It was nothing. And, and I was like, okay, now, now you have to tell your dispatch to cancel us. And he's like, huh? I was like, did you forget to do this? <laughs> yes. Yes, he did. <laughs> And so I, <laughs> he hasn't been answering calls in a long, long time. And so then, like, I shit you not, like, 10 minutes later, we get another one, like, four blocks away. And he's like, you got to go. And I'm like, you got to go. <laughs> Let me know what's up. <laughs> oh, I just kept lovely. shuttling him out. <laughs> He'd come back and be like, nothing. I'm like, okay, tell your dispatch. Again. Like, we know how to do this. And then one lady, like, we kept getting calls. I think, like, three of those calls actually were, like, somebody was high on PCP naked running around because we got three different calls at three different locations. So she was there. She just was fucking fast <laughs> because we never found PCP her. PCP does that. <laughs> Superhuman strength, <laughs> speed. Oh. So I, I kind of want to talk about the whole staging for calls thing a little bit. And I don't know if you read the new um, fire lines or whatever the international sends out the firefighter monthly whatever it's you called. lost me at the word read but continue okay <laughs> figured college boy might have read something <laughs> i mean we had to read in my college so podunk state yes <laughs> continue <laughs> yeah um so i guess in arizona and somewhere else they had with the arizona thing really stands out they had a, a house fire going they had an ambulance right around the corner staged for something. I don't know what. Some guy came up and shot the ambulance up, shot the one guy in the head and the other guy a couple times. 
then went around the corner to the house fire and started shooting people, the firefighters. And then somebody else set a fire in a dumpster, and I think it was maybe somewhere in California. And when the firefighters showed up, they got ambushed and shot. What's happened here? And it's like, how serious do we need to be taking that? Like, you know, is I, this something that, I mean, because those were two incidences very close. So is this like becoming a trend now? It, it's, it's interesting because I, and I'm not talking share like it all jokes aside, but there is like almost an enhanced level of, it, it's different. Like they don't know what they're pulling over when they pull over a car. You don't know. Mm-hmm. You could walk up to the window and there could be a gun there waiting for you. It's like we don't know what we're waiting for when we walk into a house fire. Right. The problem is, though, like, if my cop car gets shot up, I have the opportunity, it may not last very long, to pull out my firearm and attempt to return fire in defense of my life. And you have the means to do it. I mean, you could throw if my an axe at somebody. ambulance but, gets yeah. shot up, I can scream and yell and maybe throw my radio at you. <laughs> Hit him with the ambulance. You know, so there's just, and I, I, it, I don't it, know how you well can, that's. You can deal with the lawsuit <laughs> later. Go home. Hit him with the ambulance. <laughs> don't tell him that. We can't discuss hitting people with fire apparatuses right now. Yeah. Okay, fair. <laughs> it's a little too soon. Sorry. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, <laughs> um. But no, I, it scares me that like, because there are the people that prey on the vulnerable. We've had it happen here in Kansas City. We there's a medic that just retired that I think still had a bullet in her hip. Yeah, pull up on a normal house fire, like you just don't know. Yeah, and like the only thing we have to protect us is a twenty five foot, thirty thousand pound wall. If you can get behind it fast enough, mm-hmm. and it's just, I, I hope that the vulnerable don't start the chaos causers just start realizing that because the people suffer from it. So we're just going to say, nah, we're not even, nope. And you see just police cars escorting fire trucks around. Mm. Well, yeah, but what does that do to their readiness and capabilities too? If on every single call we have to have a police escort. Yeah. So I, and I just wanted to bring it up. I don't have a solution or like an agenda or anything like that. I just kind of wanted to, get you guys' thoughts on it. Take me into your mind, Jana, especially back during the protests here. I mean, what was your... You were in love with being a cop. You got into dispatch. You were sucked in. You're like, this is it. Did you still have that same fucking enthusiasm? This shit and urine and insults were getting hurled at you by complete fucking strangers. So day one and day two... Yes, because there were people in the crowd that actually wanted to have a conversation and wanted to, like, problem solve on how we can fix the relationship. The other 13 days straight after that, no. I was like, God, I should go back to school and finish my degree. Like, what What am I, I doing here? <laughs> right, this is, this is wrong. Abort, abort. Like, <laughs> I could be standing on a stage singing opera right now. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so days one and two, yes. The other 13, no. Um, and then it got a little bit better, um, because we weren't dealing with protests every single night. We were just getting called to the occasional, like, Friday night protests. Um, then we had an officer shot. Actually, we had two officers shot that day. And I remember calling my mom and I was like, why am I doing this? Like, what the heck? And we went in early that night because it was absolute chaos. Um... And then the camaraderie, like going in early with all of your buddies who are also going in early. Nobody wanted to go in early, but we also wanted to see that officer do okay. And we didn't want the whole city to implode. And like that sense of teamwork and family, that that's what really drew me to this. And so after that, it was renewed a little bit. I was still like, I mean, you get a call at McDonald's and you can get shot in the head. Like, why the heck am I doing this? But I'm doing it because of the people that I'm standing by, not necessarily me or dude in the drive-thru all the time. It's the family here that I have with me because I know that they would 
take a bullet for me or my partner. So that that renewed it. I've had I've made really good friends on this police department. I've met my fiance on this police department. So since then it's been rough, but I've never been like, mm, I'm gonna quit. I can't do this anymore. Like it's I have not But so many officers have. Part. Yes. Like that that's what's scary, is it they probably still have the same enthusiasm yes. and motivation as you. Yes. And it's okay that they did quit or that they plan on quitting because it's not for everybody. It really isn't. And if your heart isn't in it, then you're not in it and somebody could potentially get hurt. And it's nobody wants to be in that situation. It, so as much as you want to be a police officer and you want to help other people, if you're not fully invested, then it's just not for you. And, you know, I, it's almost I think we talked about this on the podcast before. It's almost like false advertising when it comes to recruiting, because when you came on, it was like, hey, you're going to help the public and you're going to put bad guys in jail. Drive fast and, cars. Yeah. And now it's like, just maybe write them a ticket, but not if they're black. And uh, don't, no, don't do that. And don't blink twice or you're going to go to jail. Like, oh, and then they're going to throw urine on you and call you a racist bitch. But they pay good. Like, right. it is not what it was fucking advertised as. I, Right, but if they advertise it as what it is, then you would never hire anybody because nobody would be crazy enough to be like, yeah, I want piss all over me. And tell me all about the record hiring numbers you're getting, too. Yeah, well, and, we're trying. We're you trying. know what I mean? Like, it's... Yes, yeah. No. I mean, people are catching on. We <laughs> haven't we haven't hired, like, anybody in two years. So we just put a class through, right? They just graduated last Thursday, thank God. And we have another class that's going through now that'll graduate sometime late summer, early fall, I think. So we're all really excited about them because we haven't had new people in a long time like half of my time on the department which really isn't that long but that's a long time to you not know, have new officers we went through the same thing on the fire department there for a few years they we just they're like no we're not hiring anybody else you guys just deal with it how it is and you know i think that was probably right about the time that we really started seeing you know, our overtime and stuff kind of starting to get out of control. Mm. And then, but it was during that period of time where we were kind of in a recession. So, you know, everybody's hurting, cities are hurting. There just, there wasn't money to hire people. Right. And you still have people retiring. I mean, thankfully we didn't have enough people retire during that time to really like catastrophically impact us as a department. But I mean, Another 10, 15 more people go, and that might have changed. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and, and I joke around kind of, but, and Jeremy will tell you, we're in the same boat on our side, too. Just officially today, we, so we do our process every two years. We haven't done one in three or four. No, we did one two years ago. We did? Yeah. Because the list is only good for two years. Oh, and yeah, we, but now we've, we've exhausted our list. We don't have, anybody else to mm-hmm. hire and you know i remember i'm curious on your take i remember like the beginning of covid right so we had like march april basically all of may and like everyone was just like hiding in their homes speaking through their blinds nobody went outside it was glorious there was no such thing as traffic right and then i remember memorial day weekend and it's like someone just lit a bomb in this city and it in some ways it doesn't feel like it's ever slowed down. Um, but I, I just remember kind of to the same camaraderie you talked about with your other officers, especially for those that like that were working on the ambulance a lot. We were running minimum staffing 20 to 30 calls a day per unit, just getting our dicks kicked in. Mm. And some of us, it's 2022. Remember that. What? You can't use that phrase anymore. Oh, some of us were getting our non-specific genitalia kicked in. Thank you. Non-gender specific. <laughs> but like it while our saltiness grew, it definitely grew. Yep. yep. I I felt like our camaraderie grew as well. It was kind of like fuck all of you. We're doing this on our own. We'll make it work. Don't call us for shit. <laughs> like and we just did it. Like I, that's I felt like Nursing did that too. Just everybody in public service, just like pretty much, yeah. Double deuces and call, we'll we'll let you know when it's done. 
Yeah. Well, I think, too, the unfortunate thing, when you're talking about that at the beginning of COVID, what we were told to do is if you can handle a call over the phone, handle it over the phone because everybody was worried about being exposed to COVID, Mm -hmm. right? Which made sense at that point because we just didn't know a lot about it. But then that's just kind of continued, and that just doesn't seem like good police service to me. Sometimes you can't just be like, oh, yeah, that's not really a police matter. You'll have to take that up with... Civil. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes that's what needs to happen. Or the same person who calls about an illegally parked vehicle in a 15-minute parking spot every single day. Like, Wait, what? People call for that shit? Yes. Remember, I work downtown, so. People call at 2 a.m. because they've been short of breath for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, it's why didn't the, you do something two weeks yeah, ago? <laughs> it's the same thing, James. I literally just had that it's, last night. It's I've silly. had chest pain how long? Two weeks ago? So it got worse? Yeah, today. Why did it get worse? It just got worse after I did some cocaine. You don't say. <laughs> well, fuck me. Okay, let's get you out of the hospital. Like, uh. I ran that call once about 8 a.m. on like a Wednesday morning. The guy had, had some cocaine at a party, and I'm like, it's Wednesday morning. Why were you doing coke at a party on a Tuesday? What do you do? What are you doing with your life? Right. Pubs going up <laughs> on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, it definitely, and I and I've kind of joked with Jeremy and some of the stuff before too, but really, it's kind of been the thirty somethings and unders that have done a large majority of the weight carrying. It is throughout I, this pandemic. I can speak to the police department because a lot of our. A lot of our people on the streets are younger because those who are older have gone on to specialized units or whatever, right? So those who are feeling, I mean, I can't say this, I can't speak for everybody because there are some older salty dogs that were answering calls alongside me. But a lot of those people who were handling 30 calls a night in a 10-hour shift are 30 and under. And so, yeah, a lot of us are really salty right now, which is really unfortunate, but... We were just getting overworked and like a lot of people's, not a lot of people, some people's solution to it was like, oh, we'll just lower minimum staffing so that it doesn't look so bad. Well, that's not, that's not healthy because there's not <laughs> any world in which I should be handling 30 calls in a 10 hour shift. <laughs> oh, you don't because like being raped? Oh, we'll just, we'll take away the lube. It'll be fine. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like <laughs> that's not a solution and it was a short term solution but now there's not like a way to go back from that like oh our minimum staffing for the shift is 13 people we lowered it to 10 during this part well it's hard to get those numbers back once they've been eliminated like mm-hmm. if you eliminate positions mm-hmm. it's a lot harder to ask for yeah them. to ask for them in the future is going to be especially after all this covid stuff and nobody has any money and well that's just like that's a business principle really right is if we have a group of people who are doing project x and we cut three of those people and the four that are left can still do the work and just divide it amongst them three why would we hire those three back right so we've kind of we're kind of being victims of our own success of our own let's pull together let's get this done and then it's like oh well you're functioning just fine well no we're not right it's it's interesting though like we are victims Period. We're not victims of our own success. We like, and we've talked about this a lot before too. The bosses were making decisions that leaders wouldn't make because bosses were up here while we were down here getting our ass kicked in the mud, looking at it from a business perspective. And in hindsight, if you're looking to get through a pandemic, maybe you do just have to stick to your guns and keep it about business to get it through. But well, you better I mean, have a contingency plan for. I mean, and I'm not sticking up for anybody. I'm, that's not what I'm doing. But you have to look at what was going on at that time and the decisions that had to be made. So he's they, a captain now? He got promoted? So he's just like, Bleh. <laughs> No, I'm talking about, talking about making decisions and leadership. So sometimes you have to make unpopular decisions because those, that's the best option that you have. Now, that doesn't mean that once, you know, you see that, okay, this path isn't taking us where we need to be, that you don't, okay, recalculate and reroute. 
I mean, you have to do that. That's what good leadership is, is, okay, yes, I made this decision. It wasn't the best decision that I could have made. It was the best decision I could make at the time. We know that we need to re- change course now, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to come up with a better decision. Here's the problem with that. That works great in the white-collar setting. Oh, man, they raised the price of chips 25 cents in the vending machine. This is bullshit. You can have unhappy employees. When you start making those type of decisions like staffing in our line of work, death can be the result. I understand that. But it's the same thing. It's the same principles the military has been using for a very long time, successfully. I mean, I'm not saying death is okay, Yeah, I'm just... but I mean... You know what I'm saying. We were in an unprecedented time. We haven't faced anything like that in recent history. I mean, you want to go all the way back to, you know, the Spanish flu or whatever, and whenever it was, 1911, 1910, whatever it was. I don't see a lot of pictures on Facebook from that. No. <laughs> but also our country, I why. <laughs> our country was vastly different then than it is now. Our fire departments, our police departments, vastly different than they were at that time. We've never had to, I mean, we're what, we're almost three years into this thing? And, or two and a half years into it? I've lost count. I've, yeah, me too. <laughs> too, it's many, just been, yeah. too many years. Okay, for as long as it's been going right. on, it's just like... <laughs> what variant are we on again? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, they won't go in alphabetical order, so it's hard to tell. Bro, yeah, the, I heard the variant, the name for this variant of the Omicron variant, and I'm like, mm-hmm. the fuck did they just say? Like, yeah. they threw a bunch of letters together real quick, and I was like, what? You, you thought they were talking about Elon Musk's kid? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I was geez. like, y'all are, just, <laughs> y'all are just throwing letters together now. Like. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so, look, we can't sit here and, I mean, we can Monday morning quarterback it and say, okay, we could have did this, we should have done that. Ultimately, the people that made those decisions and had the power to make those decisions, that maybe they chose right, maybe they chose wrong, whatever we have to deal with the world how it is i am curious not how we wish it would have been i'm curious and jay i want your opinion on this too a lot of us have said even before you got promoted we've bad leadership styles have been exacerbated during this pandemic it really exposed them oh yeah and a lot of us have said like if when i'm boss i'm not doing that i'm not doing this i'm not doing that i i want to feel like this would make us better leaders in the future. Like we've seen all the things we know not to do, but I don't know that we've all necessarily seen the things we should do. And I'm curious if when we make it into leadership down the road, a, if we're going to be so burnt out and salty and B, if we can make rational decisions outside of like, fuck you, we had to go through this. This was terrible. Shut up. You know what I mean? Like, I'm curious to see how we will do. So in response to that, I worked for a wonderful commander who is always optimistic to the point that it's sometimes sickening because I just want to be pissed at something, right? And then you you go to vent to him about it and he's got like logic and stuff that he applies and it makes sense. And you just want to be pissed. Like I just want to go and I just want to vent for a little bit, right? But he is the best person that I've ever worked for. You actually emailed him once upon a time about me. Um, Tried to get her fired. Yeah, I did. Totally. Yeah. But mission failed. He he (laughs) was wonderful because although we were all getting called in to like work all this overtime and we were being asked to do all these crazy things, he was right there along with us. And he wasn't making overtime for it because he's high enough on the police department that he just gets comp time. So he's just doing it to like help his people out. And he was coming in on overnights on dog watch to bring in donuts and just say like, hey, how are you doing? Like, is there anything that we can, anything that we can do to help you? Like, I get it. The hours suck. We're, we're trying to get back to, you know, normalcy. What, what can I do to help you? And he most definitely was always like, Hey, I had this open door policy. And he's like the only person that was legitimate when they said I had this open door policy. You could go in there, you could vent about whatever it was. He would ultimately give you his problem solving, which was always spot on, but a lot of people, I feel like, a lot of leadership, they say, hey, I have this open door policy. And then it's really not that open door, and they're not really that approachable. And But he was he was different. 
So if I ever promote, I want to be exactly like him. I well, and that's I want to be there ordering pizza for my people because they're on hour twelve of sixteen. I don't want to be working sixteen hours, but I want like I think he's part of the reason why mor- my morale stayed relatively at a healthy level because I had somebody who, even though he was getting paid way more than me and wasn't necessarily having to answer all the calls that I was, he was, um, you know, making that effort to show us that we were appreciated and heck he was answering calls with us to help out. So it wasn't so terrible. So I feel like there's, there's examples of bad leadership, but then there's also been, examples of really good leadership that have come from this and I want to learn from the really good stuff I don't want to see like all this negative stuff I want to be with rose colored glasses this is how it should be and this is how it will be what I like about him and you and I have talked about this before he understands that as you promote your responsibility doesn't change it increases Hmm. like you as an officer have a set amount of responsibilities when you promote to sergeant you still maintain that same set of responsibilities, plus all these as a supervisor, plus all these as a captain, plus all whatever other dumbass ranks you guys have. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, when you are the shift commander, you're you still carry the same responsibility as that to your officer, and it's very clear he got that. Mm-hmm. He was well, wonderful. And the important part is the fact that he was being genuine, because in leadership. You know, you mentioned you have those people where it's, hey, I got this open door policy. And then you can tell and people can tell if you're not genuine and you have to be that way as a leader, being transparent, you know, meaning what you say. And for the people that work with you, that you're responsible for, for them to know that you mean what you say. That's huge because there has to be a level of trust there, especially in our professions I have to be able to trust that the person that is supervising me has, I don't want to say my best interests, but I need to be able to trust that if we go into a fire together, they're going to be there with me. Mm. And if it's time to go to leave, they're going to take me with them and make sure that I get out too. Right. And that's good leadership. I've had the other end of the spectrum where it was like, well, we have a fire. Where's your captain at? Good question. Where's your other firefighter at? You tell me. Yeah. (laughs) I bet you find him in the rig. So, but that's why I was harping on the other day, the whole leadership at every level, because it really is, you know, you as a more junior officer, all the way up, you start going through the ranks, you still... There's still people that are, it's not a great term, below you, but with less seniority. Right. So it's still your responsibility set the example to set the really. example and look after those people. Mm. Just like it's your responsibility as a newer firefighter to do the same thing for the people that you're training underneath you. Just like it's my responsibility to look after you. I've got my first FTO right now. Made me rethink everything of leadership. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to go to that autocratic style immediately, didn't you? I yelled. <laughs> I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> and I felt bad. I Remember, felt it's 2022. Bad I instantly felt bad. It's like a parent that like disciplined their kid for the first time. Like, go to your room. I had to tell him to go to his room. Like that's how I felt. <laughs> like I yelled at my FTO. I was like, I yelled at my FTO. <laughs> felt so bad. Hey, it's, you know I give the same speech everywhere I go. Same one. If I don't know the guys, like if it's I'm going somewhere new where I don't really know anybody, I pretty much give the same speech. It's hey, look, my name's Captain Complaint. Here to complain. I'm your captain for the day. Check out my podcast. <laughs> How did you know? I haven't even worked with you. <laughs> no, but I tell everybody the same thing. Look. I'm just here for the day. said, if we get something and it's a fire, EMS call, whatever, if we're on a scene and I tell you to do something, it's a safety issue. That's why I'm telling you. So I need you to listen to me. I said, we can talk about it afterwards, 
for however long you want to talk about it. I'll explain to you everything that I saw, whatever. I said, that's the only time that I'm going to raise my voice if I have to. And that's just to get your attention, to get you moving. So, and there's no other reason. There's no other reason to be raising your voice or yelling at people. It's counterproductive in the extreme. One of my, my second favorite guests, second only to Scott, (laughs) (laughs) um, was your, I guess, what, second in command for the whole department now? Okay. With being Doug Neymar. Mm Mm-hmm. And we've had a couple, two or three times, three times, twice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, But just, he's another one that just gets it. Like, this is... When he told us, like, was it a coffee maker story for some of his civilian personnel? Or just, like, mm-hmm. just the – it's it's a thought process. Like, yeah, it, it is difficult when you're over dozens and hundreds of people. Like, the responsibilities increase. You still have to show the same dedication to those hundred employees as you did when you were a sergeant over six or seven. Mm-hmm. And it, he just – he got it. And I just – and Doug Niemeyer for president. That's <laughs> – <laughs> I. I'm serious. <laughs> like, we got a couple more years. You yeah. should tell him though. Tell him put his name in the hat. <laughs> Start campaigning for him. Yeah. I'm like, hey, right, we're right nom- in, we're I? nominating you for president. I don't want a tough shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all writing you yeah. in. Everyone is writing you in. <laughs> Good luck. But no, it's I. I'd like to kind of back to my question. I'd like to think we will be better for it. But I'd be stupid to not see the concerns with it, like when it's all said and done, because it's it's a decent little mental workload that we were under for the last seven variants. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I don't think it's it hasn't let up as much as we would sit here and like to say, oh, you know, we're almost out of this pandemic. Everything slowed down. It hasn't. Call volumes have doubled, tripled, quadrupled in some places. And where are all the fucking calls coming from? That's what I don't get. Dude, I wish I had an answer for you, but I don't. Like the population's staying the same, and the calls are about to beat the population. That's because some people need their phones taken away. Because this is not a police matter. This is not an EMS matter. This is not. But then there are things that need snitching on that there's no there's no one around, allegedly. Yeah. Hey, did you guys see that person kill that person? Nope. Nope, even though but I his lawn ain't mowed. There. Yeah, it, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, our priorities are just really skewed right now, but, yeah. Well, and that's, like, uh, I'm kind of curious with you. Like, just with the increase of violence, as we're seeing, like, lack of morals, lack of civility, increased violence. We're seeing mostly overall as a country. How do you, like, especially in law enforcement, because you have more of a hand in it than we would, like, how do you instill that back in the community to be your partner and not your adversary? That's a really good question. I know. That's why I asked it. <laughs> I don't want to say it's a parenting thing, but it's a parenting thing. And it it's something that needs to be instilled like at a young age. It really does. This whole, I, I don't know how to put it. I feel like I'm seeing younger and younger kids being the suspects of violent crimes. 13, 14 year olds that just shot and killed somebody like another 13 or 14 year old, which is mind blowing to me. I don't know if we need to teach like how permanent some of these decisions are that you make. Like if you go ahead and cap him, he's not coming back. Like he's not respawn. respawn. (laughs) (laughs) He's not, we can't bring him back from the dead. He's forever dead. Your life has changed. His life has changed. His family, his friends, it's all changed. Forever. He's camping at my fucking spawn point. <laughs> I just feel like people just don't understand I don't, the permanence of their decisions. We just yesterday, we had a f- punk ass 12 year old that set this field on fire. Told us he did it when we got there, bragged about it, and I. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I have never wanted to hit a child. But he just like he didn't give a fuck. It's it's not like he didn't comprehend it. He didn't fucking care. My cap my captain was chewing his ass. He's like, Do you understand what fucking fire is? 
He's like, yeah, I get it. He's like, it kills, it kills people. He's like, this fire ain't killing nobody. He's like, I've had multiple friends die from fire. You don't fucking play with fire. Man, fuck you. And I'm like, I, I, I had to put my hands in my pockets. It was so hard. I, I couldn't even imagine you guys. <laughs> I, it's, I'm seriously going to equate it back to parenting. Because we can talk to these people until they're blue in the face. But it's not going to mean anything coming from me. So, and I don't disagree with you, but I kind of do. Shocker. <laughs> well, so yes, the parents need to teach their kids right and wrong, right? Somebody's got to teach the parents. Right. Because now we're talking about this is a generational thing because the kids learn it from somewhere. Right. And so... I mean, it's an easy thing to say, hey, we parent your kids better. Well, if they don't know any better, because this is how they were raised, right? where's the solution for that? And that's, I like, want to it... say that there is no solution, <laughs> because I feel like we've had all these oppor- opportunities to have like listening sessions, or for somebody to come and gripe at the police department or the fire department about their issues with whatever's going on, or or just issues in general and some people are just not open to hearing other ideas so again it is a parenting thing but you're right if the parent doesn't agree with whatever the stance is then they're going to teach otherwise or not teach or whatever Mm -hmm. Um, all we can do is what we can do and that is get out and just be a positive face, be a positive interaction, whatever it may be. Maybe scaring the 12 year old into not ever setting a fire again but is. Th- that's the problem where you guys are behind the eight ball. And, you know, the joke is like, oh, the fire department saved your cat and I got to arrest your dad. Like, you don't, you're already behind the eight ball because you don't right. have that opportunity when you show up sometimes. You're not there to be the positive influence, you're there to be the consequence. We have things in place, our department does. Like with CIOs and stuff. CIOs, yeah. our SROs, they're dwindling but we still have people who work in schools right our pal unit but again how do you get a parent to subscribe to that if they're not on board you you don't some people you're just never going to change the mind of but if you can be that positive influence on a kid even though mom and dad are saying the police are bad or firefighters are bad i've never heard anybody say that so. <laughs> not true. The, you know the police are bad but they've had all these good interactions they could be like, but are they really bad? I mean, they're probably not going to go against mom or dad to their face. But if Eventually, you have all these good interactions with kids, teenagers, young adults, they're not going to believe the silent majority. No, well, no, the that's vocal, the opposite. Vocal the vocal minority. minority. There you go. Yeah. yeah. They're not going to necessarily believe that. Okay, I, I understand that you're saying that, but I got stopped by this police officer last week because I had a taillight out, and he joked with me about KU winning again and gave me a warning and let me go. Damn right they did. That was just, I don't know, basketball, so that I just heard it. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Sports. <laughs> <laughs> Sports ball. <laughs> but, I mean, there are so many opportunities that we have, and we take advantage of i think the fire department does and the police department does and i feel like we just need to do as much of that as we possibly can to get through to some people yeah i think community outreach i don't know that we can ramp it up anymore maybe be a little bit more targeted right you know a little bit more visible i don't know i don't know what the solution is but i do know that you know, our professions cannot continue with the the trend that we've been going down for the past, I would even say, five years. Well, even, like, the problem is for every, for one good interaction you have that reaches one person, there's a cell phone of a negative interaction that reaches 500,000 people. That's why there needs to be more than one good interaction. And, you know, because I, I remember... And that's the evil of social media. Well, yeah, mm. I remember... If I. I know very remember very vividly a video of you, not just you, 
<laughs> I, don't, um, I don't remember a video yes, of me. You do. So. Yes, you do. It's uh, I sent it to you. I was like, hey, loser. Spotted that red hair from a mile away. Um, <laughs> it was, I want to say you guys were like on Main Street or somewhere outside of, not too far from Westport. Somewhere in the 30s. Well, that doesn't narrow it down. And That's where I live. Practically. You had like a, like a suspected shooter and you caught up with them. There was a fight. There was a fight, suspect shooter, you caught up with them. The crowd was all in your shit. It was like you and one other officer there for a minute. Ah. Uh, remember yes, it now? Yes, I do remember that. And like the whole time in this video, they're like, look at these racist ass cops, these motherfuckers, fuck them. And like literally all they're doing is like back up, back up. Like the video speaks for itself. They're like back up. And five people will walk closer and they're like back the fuck up. And ten people will walk closer. And I'm like, I'm about to get fucked up. <laughs> like, And it's just... That video was pushed so negatively on you guys. That and one, yes. I, I do remember what you're talking about. It was in the 30s. It was not quite a shooting, but there was a guy who was pointing a gun at somebody yeah. else. And so we were telling him to drop the gun. And then there were people coming in on us, yelling, Black Lives Matter, fuck the police, like all that stuff. And I remember, I, I do remember going home that night being like, what the heck am I doing? Why am I doing this? Like, I just potentially stopped a shooting, and these people are screaming Black Lives I Matter remember, at me. I it was two me. black dudes. Yes. Like, you yes. stopped the black dude from getting their shot, and they're like, fuck the police, Black Lives Matter. And I'm like, I think y'all agree. Yeah, yeah. they saved one. I th- <laughs> yes, that one was, that was interesting. But, yes, there was negative press publicity I mean, it, it was kind of and it, it went was, national didn't it i don't know i, I remember it was not. on i went it, it went pretty viral because i remember seeing it like on tiktok and on facebook of like anti-cop sites were sharing it like and it was clearly like i told you to stop posting on those anti-cop sites <laughs> it's bad for our brand but it's good for mine because then i talk all the <laughs> shit <laughs> I talk all this shit, and then I'm like, I support cops. Look at all these bad things that people are saying, a.k.a. me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, we call that a false flag, James. <laughs> but no, I just I just remember, like, I seen, saw a lot of people, just that a certain female lawyer in this town that kind of looks like me. What the fuck happened? And it just, for every one interaction you had, for the backpack you gave a kid that needed it to go to school. And the three people that were affected positively by that, a thousand people were affected negatively by that. You can't help it. Like, there's nothing you could have done about it. You saved a dude's life, and it still got spun as a negative. Infuriating. Also, I don't know if you've seen that video, but that was resolved with zero violence. Yeah, Words, I, words only. I, it was. For the listeners, that there was, was no... <laughs> and that's what some people were saying. People were like, nobody got thrown to the ground, nobody got shot, cops weren't rude. Yet they were still being called racist. Yeah. <laughs> it's like this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So I do, I do want to touch on something real quick: um, it, the social media aspect of everything, and having, like, I don't know if you're on social media or whatever, but what part of that? I mean, are you thinking about whenever you're on a call? Because I mean, it, it's even I've noticed it even more for us, um, especially in the district that I was at previously. Almost every call that we went on, we were being videoed. Mm. So What's Social media deleter, tell us. <laughs> social media deleter. I got it back. Finally. <laughs> Did this asshole block me? Can't find it. No, her. no. Just deleted it because I was tired of the negativity. Um, social media is a tool that can be both help- helpful and very hurtful. Um, when I started this career, I wasn't too worried about somebody putting a camera up like i don't care you can record all day and that's still my opinion to this day i have a body camera i have a dash camera i have a mic pack on my hip you can record me all you want i don't care it doesn't change how i do things but there are a lot of people that we deal with that don't want their worst moments recorded so i try to tell that to people and then i'm a horrible person for saying hey can you go over there and record like you have a right to record but she doesn't want you in her face because she just got victimized so can you and then I'm the bad person. Oh, you don't want to be recorded. No, I'm like, I'm, I'm recording right now. This is all discoverable. You can, you know, file a motion through the police department, whatever, to see my video if you would like it. Yes, this person is fine. If you'd like to go across the street and record to ensure that they're going to be safe, cool. That's fine. That's your right. But 
I just feel like some people use it in the wrong manner. Because, like you said, that video should have been... An example of what to do. Exactly. It should have been positive. But they spin it to, like, their narrative, and it it ends up being the exact opposite of not what we intended it to be, because that's just how we handle calls, and that's just what we do, but the opposite of what it should have been. Um, I, frankly, don't care when people want to record. I think it's rude, because I don't go record them at their workplace, but... If they want to record, they can record. That's all right. You should just start walking into like these gas stations and shit and be <laughs> start fucking recording. Yeah. I think a majority of the people that do the recording don't actually have real jobs. So that too. Be hard pressed to find them. They got to go to a place Social to find Wi Fi to upload the video. Yeah. yeah. I. Oh, well, downtown has Wi Fi. What are you talking about? They just have to <laughs> get on a bus. Just have to be there. <laughs> I remember. I've seen exactly how negative social media can be, and I've seen it with her. I remember I almost threw up. I was so sick to my stomach when I saw, like, all your personal information get released on Twitter. Like, I I was so fucking pissed. And I, I'm not even you, so I... <laughs> <laughs> there, I was, there was definitely a moment, because I was on a call... And I got a call from my sergeant, and he was like, you need to get to the station now. I'm like, what did I do? I'm like, oh. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like trying to think back. I even had a ride-along with me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what could I have possibly done that was this bad? And he's like, did you see the post? I'm like, no, what post are you talking about? He's like, they just posted your address and your information. Okay, so I like looked at the officer that I was with. I'm like, I have to go to the station. Can you handle this? They're like, yeah, we, we, can, we got it. So I went to the station and we were like, what do we do? We didn't have a policy for getting doxxed. Like, what do you do when your name, your address, your phone number, when all that's posted to the internet during a time when they're literally calling for police officers to die? die. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, my God, what do I do? Of course, I'm calling Scott because. <laughs> Help. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, hey, hey, this thing's happening. He was asleep. He didn't answer the phone call. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was good, good. We so, got to have Scott back on. We got to get some right. questions. Yeah. <laughs> so, Maybe it's I, a good thing we didn't have them together. Oh, yeah. Probably. I, probably for the best. I don't know. It probably would have been that controversial episode you've been <laughs> <Yeah>. wanting. <laughs> it would have been like premarital counseling. Well, that's what we, we had talked about, like having you guys both on together to discuss like the relationship aspect and how that worked. And we were like, no, like let's let her have her own episode. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, Thank God we did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I did. I I called him as like a courtesy to be like, hey, like this is going on. He was asleep. Whatever, that's fine. You need to sleep. So I went home and I had somebody posted outside my house in a patrol car. I was say one one of you guys, right? Mm -hmm. And I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, what the heck do I do now? Like, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to upend my whole life because somebody just posted my address online. Surely nothing's going to come of it, but is something going to come of it? Like, I don't know. So then I got a call from the chief of police like two hours later. Like, hey, are you doing okay? Like, yeah, I was trying well, to sleep. I was, I, was trying to, I was trying to sleep, but yeah, I'm doing great. Like, <laughs> he's like, you need anything? Like, you still got the police officers outside? I was like, actually, I sent them away. What can they do that I can't? I have, I have all the tools that I need to protect myself should the moment arise. In the castle law on your side. <sighs> well, thank God so, for Missouri. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but so I'm going to stop you right there. It's never a bad thing to have an extra layer of security. Right. I get it. My wife and I have had the same conversation. And I'm like, no, just call. It's fine. Well, yes, but who am I calling? I'm literally calling myself, basically. No. <laughs> That's, Scott's asleep. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> Scott's not coming. Yeah, yeah. At that time, we weren't living together, yeah. so yeah, he was he was dead to the world. But but no, I, I I get the the mindset and the viewpoint because I'd be the same way. It's like, no, I don't need anybody here. But you know, having that extra twenty seconds or thirty seconds to know something's going down. Right, but there. you can't post somebody outside my house if for if the weeks on it. No, if the, but if for the guy, that day. Here's the problem, realistically, though. If the guy posted outside shoots the intruder, he's getting indicted. 
You are protected. I by lived the... in Clay County. We're good. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was like, you're protected by the castle law. Like, hey, come on in. Something yeah. waiting for you. <laughs> well, and I did. I did get security cameras for my house after that, just as like a little extra mm-hmm. peace of mind, I guess. I don't know that it really gives me any peace of so mind. I kind of get annoyed. Her being murdered would be recorded. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so they yes. can know exactly what happened. Yes. That way they have a face. <laughs> now they have something to go off of. If this guy is like great and has gloves on and doesn't leave behind any DNA, they have a face to go off of. No. Unless he's wearing a mask. Okay. It, it was during the <laughs> pandemic. That's yeah. true. Safety But first. at that time, people weren't really wearing masks. Remember? Because it was like... Oh, it went away. It, instantly. Yeah. Well, it was yeah. like... Nobody left the house. And then it was like, masks are optional. So it was like, some people subscribed to it, some people didn't. And then, like, they went away, and then it was mandatory. And then they went away. <laughs> <laughs> and then Ukraine got invaded and COVID ended. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but And Fauci is MIA. <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I remember, like, going back to the social media, like, how destructive it can be. Like, yep. Yeah. So like, for, I, I want to raise this point, and I wish... I wish I knew we were going to talk about this. I'd have been a little bit more prepared. There is a company that will erase all that stuff. Correct. I learned that after the fact. Yes. <laughs> so if anybody out there is watching law enforcement or whatever, look it up. I mean, it, I'm sure it's a pretty easy Google search. Can you get rid of some YouTube videos for me? I I don't know. What kind of YouTube videos Don't are worry we talking about it. About? I just need some stuff erased. <laughs> I'm it's called gonna... the Washdown Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this is a low, can... low point in my life. I just don't want to. <laughs> I can do that for you. I can edit you right out. Can you, though? There's a real fat shadow on the wall. <laughs> it's going to be me or Nelson. It's pretty obvious who was sitting here. <laughs> Dude, I'll just put it into the editing program and just erase you right out. <laughs> then I'll have to go into the audio and just. It'll sound like we're having a really weird two-way conversation. You know, it's as we. Um, it seems like as we get more and more to this discussion, I just want to keep asking, like, you still happy you're doing this? Like, it's just unfortunately for you, or at least because I have been friends with you. Like hearing your beginning story of like this is great, where I'm like, just sunshine, like, roses, yeah, unicorns, like, butterflies. Yeah, like every other day, I'm like, hey, Jana, how are you feeling today? <laughs> like, well, all in the first. That's a lot in the first five years. Yeah. Of your career. Yeah. I mean, you go from, I mean, I'm not going to say everybody loves police, but you go from a normal time where it's not obviously how it is now. And then right into a pandemic, into the police or the devil, you get doxxed. I mean, that's a lot in a short amount of time. It is a lot. The fuck you doing, girl? <laughs> I don't know. I'd like to tell you it's my therapist, but I haven't found a good one, so. We can help you with that. But even weirder about the the pandemic, (laughs) even weirder about the pandemic, though, was like first responders were heroes at the beginning of the pandemic. No, do you remember that? Like, we were getting stuff brought to the station all the time. Oh, yeah. Like, packaged food, because nobody was baking brownies to bring in. But, like, people were bringing in food. They were bringing in gloves and masks because we weren't provided that initially. I mean, we people, had gloves like, at the station. But, but I remember people were, like, making masks for us. Like, old yes. ladies were sitting down yes. and sewing shit together. And, yes. Yeah. There was somebody that brought a bag of 200 masks to our station alone. And there are six division stations. So, like, we were heroes for a while. And then two months later, hated. So. It was like a light, like a flip of a switch. Yeah. We saw it with nurses. Everyone's like, yay, nurses. And then they're like, those devils aren't getting vaccinated. Like, it just overnight. Yeah, well, that's whenever you take something and make it political the way that it was made. I mean, you do that to divide people. Right. That That's all that is. That's And that's where we want to talk about leadership at the higher levels doing a shit job. Like, to the point where I don't want to say treason, but pretty much. One thing I like about their top leader for the few days he has left, unfortunately, I remember, like, you know those times where you're just like, I wish they would just say this? Like, the question, like, you, like there's the politically correct answer, mm-hmm. and then there's, like, the I just wish they would say this answer. I'll, I'll never forget there was a uh, a shooting 
uh, during First Fridays. And this homicide. Uh huh. And this mm. it was um this girl was hit by a stray bullet. Mm. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly which one you're talking about. Um, and I always laugh because, like, this dumb fuck did it, like, five feet from Stubbs. I'm like, what part of that seven-foot motherfucker made you think you could outrun him? Stubbs and Allen. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Two I, of the fastest people in the police yeah, department. Yeah, I was like, bro, like, do that in front of some white people. What <laughs> What about those two looks like you're getting away? And he didn't. He made right. it, like, ten feet because all right. Stubbs did was just, like, two, nah. Like, two steps and just, like, <laughs> yeah. It is but, not okay, James. There are fast white people. I will have you know. It's 2022. Anyway, it's Stubbs and Al. what it is. <laughs> yeah, so you get yeah. away. But I remember um, some dumbass reporter was like, <laughs> I remember watching this news conference and just laughing my ass off. They're like, well, don't you think more officer presence could have deterred violence like this? And. Rick was like, we were 10 feet from him. What do you want? More cops? Cops on horses? Cops in tanks? And I was like, my man, cops in tanks. <laughs> but it was just like, just the common sense answer it seemed like we all wanted. I, I'll never forget that. It will always stand out to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can always rely on mass media to ask the dumbest fucking question. <laughs> that is so true. Oh. Sorry, you. I <laughs> yeah. Good job. I still I still want to get that button to just so you can mute yourself. I had it when I'm sitting back there, but you make me sit in front of the fucking camera. Well, that's because you want to take ownership of the podcast. You want to be in charge. Or at no, least I don't. In, no, you, see, now you keep changing. You wanna, First it was, well, this is your guest. <laughs> hey. You want to be more involved. And technically, you knew Scott before I knew Jana, so technically, it's your guest. Which brings us back to the point of, <laughs> I didn't really know she existed before. <laughs> somebody's so... going to hear from me later, and that somebody's going to be my fiance. <laughs> <laughs> but technically, if you want to get totally technical. I'm texting him right now. <laughs> so my wife knew Scott before... I knew Scott, and actually Nelson knew Scott before all of us. That's true. That is true. <laughs> so, in a roundabout way, this is all Chris's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I said, bail, bail, bail. <laughs> The house better be like spotless when I get home. I, I think we do need to have them both on. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm gonna sit back there though. <laughs> and I'm gonna let you. We need to clear all objects from the table though. Oh yeah. Like so, one of them will sit here, one of them will sit there, I'm and not, you'll sit I'm in the middle. I'm not physically no, violent. That's a DV charge. I'm not trying. I've to get. seen videos of you on the internet being a racist, Jana. You're violent. <laughs> well, he's white, so it's fine, right? <laughs> and you do CrossFit, and I don't know if you guys know, you but said all it, not work, me. You all said working it. out, drink, <laughs> <laughs> shit, <laughs> all working out is racist. By the way, in mm -hmm. case you oh. didn't know that, yep. no, I haven't heard that one. Yeah, that was apparently. And you have no soul, clearly. Mm. MSNBC yep. did a thing that said if you work out, then you're a racist and a Nazi. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm gonna live longer than them, so. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on! He's like, well, she flipped me off on the way out, so I don't doubt it. <laughs> Did you, he said that to no, you just sent it to him. Yeah, you're not in the cool kids club. No girls allowed you. So. Sorry, sorry, it's a gender neutral club. <laughs> All letters and genders are allowed. Aren't you're supposed to be our like? Say it, because you know I. You, you already know you're going to be wrong when you say it. But go ahead and say it. Exactly. <laughs> you're supposed to be like our person who keeps us on track as far as being a kinder and gentler podcast, and making sure that we remember that it's 2022 and we can't say things that weren't offensive six I'm not, months ago. I'm not the straight white male, is that what you're saying? I think kinder and gentler went out the window when he said fuck. 
like two <laughs> minutes into. I say it too. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying. You watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> exactly. Hey, those who cuss are more intelligent. I do say fuck a lot. My, the IQ test just don't back it up. Just yeah. fuck isn't the answer for every question. Okay, on there. statistically, statistically, <laughs> you have to use cuss. other words besides that one. I said like your fuck vocabulary, you, fucker. Like I, I, there are so many uses for yes. that word, though. <laughs> I feel sorry for some poor, like, non-English speaking person trying to learn the English language. Like a whole semester could be used for the word fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, it's true. It's like. 19 different ways he can be used. 19? Yeah. Okay, let's... That's, that's for Scott. There you go. <laughs> let's shift gears a little bit, and since we're getting close to time, and try to end it on something other than that. What, CrossFit? <laughs> <laughs> this could be a game. Like, I could start this. It could be fun. <laughs> That's, that's what we'll do. We'll have both them on. I'll be on. You can sit back there. Mm-hmm. And anytime either one of them says Jeep or CrossFit, we're taking shots. Well, you, I'll know, win. you don't have to since you're, since you're back there. I'll win. Yes, we're not doing that on this podcast. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we can make it like one of the like little DVD extras. <laughs> like a blooper? Yeah, like a little blooper reel. <laughs> that's like two hours of us just getting trashed. <laughs> It wouldn't take that long for me, actually. So. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. Don't you love it? Just want us youth get on here? Uh, yeah. It's <laughs> super awesome. I'm telling you, he got promoted captain and, like, went five steps grumpier just overnight. It's not possible. Like, they pinned grumpy on his collar brass. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Are you sleepy if we're going to go with the seven dwarfs? Sleepy? I'm going to tell you why that pisses me off off the camera. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, no. You, you, you want to talk about I everything just, else on camera? I just, yeah. I can't discuss what I'm going to discuss on the camera, but it pissed me off, damn it. Okay, so closing thoughts. I I learned a lot. Um, <laughs> no, like, I as we, like... Every, all the instances like we kind of talked about, like I've talked to her about as they've happened, but I've never just kind of like sat down with you and like recapped what the fuck has went on in your career the last four years. And I'm just like, damn girl, why are you still on this job? Like, why are you still on the job? Because the world needs beautiful firemen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so why are you still on the job? Because <laughs> we need something to compare them to. <laughs> There you go. Good point. Yeah, but no. Um, let's talk about that. And like, it it was nice. Like, like I said, I had kind of wanted to inquire about. Was just like, how does this relationship work? Like, what are your boundaries? Like, just learning. And I think other people listen to this episode as well. Like, can kind of hopefully take away from that and just learn little tidbits. But yeah, that's what, that's what I got. What I was here for: talk shit and learn a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think the. You know, one of the biggest takeaways for me is the, you know, everything that has happened in your career in such a short amount of time has been very compressed and you still have a really good attitude and still the want and drive to do the job. And, you know, we talked a little bit before we started about, you know, peer support and how you want to get involved with that. And I mean, those are those things are huge. And somebody that wants to get into doing all that stuff, you know, especially with everything that you've been through. I mean, it's just, it's a big positive. So final thoughts for you. Um, On that note, I'm not the exception. There's a lot like me. I promise. It may not, it may not seem that way on the outside looking in, but it, it really is that way. There's a lot of people. I can promise you that everybody that's on the street right now still wants to be here because if they didn't want to be here, they would have left two years ago because it was so hellacious. So, I'm not the only one. And humble. There's there's hope for the future. And CrossFit. 
Go Fuck. ahead. Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> so, but yeah, you're right. Uh, just one more thing. Um, there is hope for the future. And we, you know, through this whole conversation that we've had, we've talked about, okay, we staffing shortages, we're having problems hiring and all that stuff. And I think it often gets overlooked that, you know, the people that we have hired in the recent probably last year, six months, whatever, those people that are coming into our career fields now, they know what they're getting into. It's not the whole, hey, you're going to go do this, the public's going to love you, and all of that stuff. They're coming into it going, hey, this is what the public feels like, the average citizen. I still have the drive. I still want to do this job. This is my calling. So it might be one of the best things that's happened for us is we're going to And it can only kind of get better for them. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, it might, we might, get better. we might start getting, we <laughs> might start getting better applicants. Right. Instead people, of just more. Yeah. People that are driven and it, because I've talked about that before about these professions, it really almost has to be a calling for you to be successful at them. Because somebody who comes in and looks at it as, oh, it's just a job. I'm going to be here for a year or two, and then I'm going to move on to the next thing. You're going to have those people, but they're not going to be here long term. The long term people are the ones that this is what I'm meant to do. So, all right, I'm off my soapbox. All right, everybody. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I was holding my breath the whole time. Yeah. (laughs) He does that. He just holds his breath randomly. It's called apnea. Most people have <laughs> sleep apnea. I have that too. <laughs> uh, everybody, thanks for stopping by. Jana, thanks for doing the show. Of course. Thanks, Appreciate pal. it. Love you. Um, Scott, <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, yeah, so everybody, thanks for stopping by. Remember, if you are struggling, reach out. There are resources out there. There are people there that want to help you and that can help you. Um, and if you know somebody that is struggling, reach out to them, let them know what the resources are, let them know that you care. Uh, One of the, probably the biggest trick that the mind is going to play on you whenever, you know, you're down in the dumps, depressed, you know, dealing with PTS or PTSD or anything like that. One of the biggest feelings is that you're alone. Well, you're not alone. Everybody feels that way. Everybody goes through stuff. There are people out there to help and there are programs out there to help. So reach out. Thanks.